Welcome to the Golconda Fort. Follow the main path from the cannon. You are about to see the administrative offices of the Golconda Fort. Let's start with the brief description of the Golconda Fort even before the Kingdom of Golconda rose in prominence. The beginning of the fort was thought to be in 1143, when the Karkati of dynasty ruled the region according to legend. A shepherd boy found an idol in the area for this was reported to the Karkati Yang King. He ordered a mud fort to be built around it. The fort eventually became known as Golaconda, which in Tegulu meant shepherds hill. You were walking through the administrative offices right. Now talking about Golconda's administration. Akinar and Madana were the Hindu ministers during the rule of Abul Hassan Tanishar. The last Kutubshai Rulithi were known for their administrative skill and business acumen there. Were no computers at the time, so filing the information of such a vast kingdom and informing the Sultan had to be very official check the holes in the walls, where curtains were used as room separators and shelves for storing the records, the administration, and strength of fortress proved to be as impregnable as its reputation claimed in 1686. The Mughal prince Aurangzeb started to lay siege on the fort of Golconda, with the intent of claiming Hyderabad, the wealthy capital of the Qutub Shahi dynasty it wasn't until the year after, in 1687, when Aurangzeb finally managed to breach the fort after a nine-month-long siege it was said that their fort only fell down because of a traitor who sabotaged the gate here today. Even after almost 800 years, the fort still stands as one of Hyderabad's greatest architectural under Stigokonda forces, listed as an archaeological treasure on the official list of monuments prepared by their Archaeological Survey of India it is the clear example of greatest engineering marvels the walls around are made from natural rocks. Could you even imagine making such structure without modern machines a short climb up the stairs? We'll take you to the top of administrative offices. The view from the top of the administrative office is good to take a picture at a good view helps you notice that the whole fort is built on natural rocks and now you have a broader view of Najana Garden and administrative blocks. Having seen the administration of fishies, you can walk, continue walking on the main path towards your left, you have a great view of Upper Golconda Fort further, you will reach Musa Bauli on this path now. Let's talk about some history. Sultan Kli was the first ruler to rule over this place, he fortified there, in a structure of the mud fort which stood Hari his son, Ibrahim Kli, further strengthened it and constructed the inner places, mocks and other buildings so you can still see the splendor that was Haref strong Shia following them. Lineage with Persia encouraged the constant influx of Persians who made a strong impact on all walks of life and culture during the Qutub Shahi rule of 175 lunar years. Golconda and Hyderabad blossomed with activities of trade and culture every soon. Golconda became a hub of composite culture with unique architecture and monuments of a distinct Qutub Shahi style. A fusion of Indian and Persian styles, this Indo-Persian fusion extended beyond architecture and influence people's lives in every sphere this unique culture which evolved was known as Deccani, which is popular now as Hyderabadi culture. Now you are near the staircase leading to the top of the fort towards the top. You can explore the Paradri view from the top is great. You can most parts of Hyderabad from there moving straight you will reach Musa Bauli. Moving on, taking left will lead you to the upper Golconda, taking right will lead you to Najana Garden through a beautiful fountain here towards left you can also see Musa Bowli Park you are seeing is the Musa Bowli, Bowli means the well. Water was supplied to the reservoir through underground pipes from a secret lake. Dug in Cairo the source of the water was kept secret to prevent any poisoning of it. The stead well used to be a work of art with carvings and mound in and around see if you can find anything now the water was raised by there. Persian wheel was stored in overhead tanks at different levels, which you will notice as you climb up now. Talking about the architecture of Golconda, it is built on a 400-foot hill that had three lines of massive fortification walls, one within the other, rising above 12 meters in height at deep moat with a circumference of 7 kilometers so around the fort and the town there were eight imposing gateways, 
84 bastions rising up to 18 meters in height mounted with cannons of varying caliber this fort was impregnable in the medieval decatha defeat of the Kharkitias by the Delhi Sultanate in the early 14th century saw the, saw the appointment of governors to rule these areas own of the governors. But Harman Shah revolted against the Sultanate and formed the Barmana Sultanate in the Deccan. Sultanate after the death of Muhammad Shah Bihaman, the Deccan Sultanate broke up into five principalities, Ahmednagar, Barer, Bijapur, Baidar and Golconda Sultan Kli. The Subedar and governor of Golconda declared himself independent and laid the foundation of a new dynasty. Kutub Shahi dynasty in 1550 or during the Kutub Shahi rule of 175 lunar years. Golconda and Hyderabad blossomed with activities of trade and culture and enjoy the beautiful fountain. This once used to fill with water this fountain used to have swans all around it. straight and climb up the stairs to move towards the Najna garden after climbing the stairs. You will reach a platform from here. The view towards the right is of the upper Golconda towards you left you can see a wide range of flowers walking straight will lead you to Najna garden. You will have to climb down the staircase to reach the center of the Najna garden from there you can take right for administrative blocks and left to directly reach the entrance via army. Barracks the Kahinor is believed to be found in the 11th century changed several hands in adorns the Queen of England's crown today. Diamond trade was done here on the open Najin the Bagli trade flourished under Kutub Shahi. Rule this was the only place in the world where diamonds were available and traded in the world in. The 16th century traders from all over the world thronged to Najin Abag to procure the gems and diamonds, the world famous diamonds. Kahinor, the Hope and the Jacob were first traded at this very place. Let's talk about army now the Portuguese regularly supplied arms. In addition to the locally manufactured arms of Islamabad, gunpowder and car tirages at Maclipat and Armon are the famous and the biggest fortress in the Deccan. Platuite is built on a 400 foot hill that had three lines of massive fortification walls, one within the other, rising above 12 meters in height at deep moat with a circumference of seven kilometers so around the fort and the town there were eight imposing gateways. 84 bastions rising up to 18 meters in height mounted with cannons of varying caliber this fort was impregnable in the medieval Deccan the defeat of the Kharkitias by the Delhi Sultanate in the early 14th century saw the, saw the appointment of governors to rule these areas the strong Shia following and lineage with Persia encouraged the constant influx of Persians who made a strong impact on all walks of life and culture during the Qutub Shahi rule of 175 lunar years. Golconda and Hyderabad blossomed with activities of trade and culture imagine yourself to be a prospective soldier. Do you see iron weight with a ring? Usually there are people there trying to lift ITI if you can lift it. You are qualified to be recruited into the army. One has to prove his strength to join the army now. I would suggest you to avoid trying to lift the 225 kilograms iron rock the Kutub Shahi recruited soldiers from far away places like Arabia. Turkey, Arabia and Central Asia had a standing international army of 60,000 soldiers. 